and welcome back to Study Onion! And today we're going to be talking about sundials and shadow sticks and more in particular about looking at the sun to identify our longitude. Let's get started! So we're just going to be talking about a few definitions to start off with. So the speed at which the sun moves across the sky will differ on different days. The sun moves slowly across the sky on some days and moves faster across the sky on other days. The apparent solar time is what shows us the time correlated to the speed at which the actual sun moves on each day. And this is also sometimes known as the local apparent solar time. This is also sometimes abbreviated as AST. So because the actual sun is unreliable in providing a steady measure of time, we have created an imaginary mean sun that crosses the sky at the same speed every day. And the time that it correlates with this sun is known as the mean solar time. Now, if you talk about the local mean time, the local mean time is the mean solar time for a specific location on Earth. And all places that share the same longitude will have the same local mean time. Alright, so let's look at this diagram about shadows in the night sky. So during the morning, which is towards the east, shadows become shorter as the sun begins to rise in the sky. During about midday, the sun culminates, which means that it reaches the highest point in the sky, when and the lengths of the shadows are the shortest. In the afternoon, or later in the afternoon, the sun is lower in the sky, which then means that the shadows become longer. And this is towards the west in the sky. Now let's take a little look at a sundial and see if we can label some of the parts. So the little like greenish plate on the sundial is known as the disc plate and that is where the shadows are projected from the pneumon. So the pneumon is the part of the sundial which projects the shadows onto the disc plate allowing for the time to be read. And what this shadow being projected actually does is that there are time labels similar to a clock on this disc plate and by projecting the shadow onto the disc plate, it allows you to use the shadow as almost a dial to which to read off the disc plate. So let's take a little look at the equipment you need to perform the shadow stick experiment. Firstly, you'll need a sunny or outdoor space. This can be a park or a garden. Next, you'd like a straight stick or rod that's not too long, maybe about 30 to 50 centimetres long. You should have a marker pen, a watch, a clock or a phone to measure the time, a jar or pot that you can fill with sand to make sure that the stick stands up straight, a flat piece of A2 paper or just like a board which you can use to put markings on of how long the shadow was and finally a ruler and a pencil. Now let's take a minute to talk about the method. So step one is to place the rod straight into the pot that you filled with sand and you place the pot on top of the paper or board preferably before 10 a.m. GMT or 11 a.m. if you're doing it in the summer uh, British Standard Time. You want to ensure that the longest shadow you predict will happen will stay within the range of the cardboard so that you don't have to make your markings outside the cardboard. Step 3 is to start at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or you can always start earlier and mark the position of the shadow at the point where it ends every 15 minutes and you would like to or you should record the time with a watch or a clock or a phone in that same location so just make a little x where the shadow stops and write the time the current time on to that same area then 
you would from 11:30 GMT to 12:30 GMT or 12:30 BST to 1:30 BST you should increase the number of increments of the measurements that you take from every 10 minutes or every 5 minutes so that you're more able to see the steepness and the curve of the graph during midday when you predict to have the shortest shadows. Then you want to measure the distance between the centre of the pot and your markings and record all of this data in a table before you are going to plot it. Let's talk about how you would plot the graph. The first thing you would like to do is to use a graph of shadow length against time. And when you plot this graph, you must avoid zigzags. Try and make it as smooth as a curve as you possibly can. Also, the scale for the shadow length should not start at zero. If it did, the curve and the steepness of the graph would be very, very short. And this would make it incredibly difficult to accurately disdain the shortest shadow out of the range. And like I just said, the graph should be a smooth curve from which the time of the shortest shadow can be read off the time axis. So, to summarise, the speed at which the real sun moves across the sky differs on each day. The sun moves slower across the sky on some days and the sun moves faster across the sky on other days. The apparent solar time demonstrates the time in correlation to the speed at which the actual sun moves on each day. And this can sometimes also be referred to as the local apparent solar time. The mean solar time is the time that correlates with the imaginary mean sun that crosses the sky at the same speed every day. And local mean time is the mean solar time for a specific location on Earth. All places will share the same local mean time if they have the same longitude. The equipment that you need to perform this experiment include a sunny outdoor space, a straight stick or rod that's 30 to 50 centimeters long, a marker pen, a clock or a watch, a jar or a pot that's filled with sand, a flat board or piece of A2 paper, a ruler and a pencil. The way to perform this experiment is basically the tip of the shadow should be measured with a small cross every five minutes from about 10.30 to 1.30 or 11.30 to 2.30 during daylight saving time along with the time that is indicated by a phone or a watch. The result should then be recorded in a table and the graph should be plotted with the graph being made sure to be a smooth curve with the axes not starting at zero. So thank you very much for watching this video about sundials and shadow sticks. Make sure to stay tuned in for next week when we talk about equation of time. But for now, bye!